Uh, this morning I'm just uh, doing some more seacock testing and uh, what I've done here is I've uh, drilled and tapped uh, three holes for the flange of this seacock into a half inch solid fiberglass board. Uh, this, this is a product that is made, uh, it's called GPO3. It's factory made. Uh, it's very, very strong. Uh, I recommend it on my website for backing blocks. Uh, people really seem to like it. There's another product called G10, which is even stronger. Uh, normally when making backing blocks, and when I'm using the drill and tap method, I use 5 8 inch thick. But uh, for this, I decided to try half inch just to see how strong it is. Uh, what I've also done is I've found uh, you know, one of the smallest, uh, what I would consider perhaps the least robust uh, UL Marine listed uh, flange seacocks. Uh, I find the Apollo version of this a little bit thicker and more robust. Um, so we've got some, we've got three 5 16 by 18 bolts here drilled and tapped into the fiberglass. And I purposely uh, have not installed the through hull fitting. Uh, the through hull fitting uh, it is an integral part of this, so this is kind of an unfair test because when the through hole fitting is inserted up in here, it adds even more strength. And the distribution of it underneath the hull gives uh, significantly more strength. In fact, most of the strength actually is, is coming from the through hole fitting. Uh, the bolts are, are there kind of as a secondary. Uh, but when I, when I mention this alternative method on my website, uh, where you could drill and tap. A lot of people don't, I don't know why, but they don't want to drill any more holes in their hull to through bolt the flange, which is the traditional method of installing a flange seacock. So this method would allow you to drill and tap into the back of the, into the backing block. And we're going to see if it meets the ABYC standards today, uh, the threaded bolts. Uh, this needs to withstand 500 pounds for 30 seconds. What I've done is I've got some Dyneema uh, line here for low stretch. We go into the digital load cell. I'm going to a block, uh, which will help hopefully give me a little less stretch and a little more smoother pull. I've just mounted a pad eye to the bench and my self-tailing winch. So uh, let's go ahead and load this up and see what happens. Uh, hopefully it does better than the last two valves that I tested, uh, which the, both of the valves, I, I just finished up a Marillon three-quarter inch valve and uh, in fact right here, um, this one just literally blew apart at a well under the 500 pounds for 30 seconds, uh, which is not at all what I expected. Uh, so anyway, get the camera adjusted here, and I am going to go load this up, and we'll see what happens. All right, we're 340. Oh, we're almost 400 pounds now. We got a little bit of line stretch when I let the winch go back. Could be just slipping on the winch. Now we're creeping upwards of 500 pounds when I hold on to the winch here. Let me just get that back up. When I, uh, the winch is slipping a little bit. Let me get this over 500 and see if I can get her to hold there. Okay, there we are at the well, 500. Let me go back above one more click here. Yeah, my knots are. All right, we're at uh, wow, <laughs> well over the ABYC limit. And remember, this is just drilled and tapped bolts into half-inch fiberglass. Not only is the seacock handling the 500 plus pounds, uh, we're we're grossly exceeding what ABYC wants to see um, and you know now we're I mean as you can see the actual we're over 600 pounds now uh, put the pressure back on it yeah, I got this Dyneema line does not like to hold knots it's a little slippery so uh, but again you know we're still over the 500 pounds and those bolts have not let go and that's that was my that's my whole curiosity here. This is only half inch fiberglass. The seacock is still holding. It hasn't blown apart yet. It only needs to withstand 500 pounds uh, for 30 seconds. We're holding it over 640 right now. Um, and, and neither the bolts nor the seacock or the uh, male adapter has failed. 
uh, and interestingly enough, uh, none, of, none of my Dyneema line or Vectran line has failed, but I wouldn't expect that because these will hold 10,000 pounds or more. So, uh, I mean, we're holding it well over 600 pounds. This is over 100 pounds more than what the ABYC requires. Um, as I mentioned on my website, I've done the testing on these bolts. I've loaded up a single 5 16 by 18 bolt and a direct line pulled to over 1,000 pounds before. So uh, let's put a little more, let's see how high she'll go here. I actually don't want to break this valve yet because i got some more testing to do. But now we're over 700 pounds of force uh, pulling on this, on these threads just drilled and tapped into fiberglass. No nuts on these. No nuts. Drilled and tapped into half inch thick fiberglass. 700 and plus pounds. Wow, <laughs> yeah, this valve is pretty tough, i got to say, considering that Marillon valve blew apart at somewhere under 200 pounds, and the PVC valve failed at, failed at you know, 250 pounds or so. Um, bronze is, uh, these valves uh, in this installation method, I'm going to call it pretty tough. I don't want to get hit in the face with this valve, so I'm going to let her go now. But we have uh, grossly exceeded... In fact, that's still holding. Uh, I'm not letting off on it quite yet because uh, I want to get a better view of the load that's on this. Uh, this is this is one of the reasons why I use bronze. Uh, now it, it's got the the possibility of corrosion, but on a properly wired boat, uh, that should not be a, a concern. We can see uh, at 620 some odd pounds at this half inch. GPO3, you can see how strong it is. We don't have much of a deflection here uh, at all. Uh, the stuff is amazingly strong. Um, if I were to put a straight edge on it, you know, we're, we're, we're flexing it. This is uh, about a 12 inch wide piece. But more importantly, and, and, the, and the thing that, that I'm impressed with is that the, the valve itself has not, has not flexed. The, the male adapter is bending off a little bit, it, it appears to be. Um, but again, as we can see, there's no through hole in here, which would make this whole assembly even stronger. My guess is this would go well over a thousand pounds uh, before it failed. And, uh, and these are just drilled and tapped into fiberglass. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, while I have it on video, under load probably isn't such a wise idea. But uh, I'm going to take the bolt out on the lee side here because the pressure on that is simply downward so that we can see that there's no no trickery or skullduggery going on in fact these are the these are the holes that I used uh, to test the Marillon valve uh, which I did yesterday the day before which I have right here uh, this this failed uh, in the same exact test um, same exact test that failed it under under the ABYC load. Again, not a fair comparison because we didn't have uh, a through hole in there. We, you know, we're, we were missing, you know, we're missing the through hole fitting. But still, we're in the same situation with bronze. Sorry about that, my camera only lets me film for so long. I'm going to have to edit this in, but I, I like to do these videos completely unedited. Uh, but the majority of what you've seen has been, been unedited, so um, I'm going to finish taking this third bolt out on the lee side of the, of the valve here. And um, you can see we're still, we're still over 600. We've got a little bit of stretch in the line here. Um, and, and, and remember, the ABYC standard is 500 pounds for 30 seconds at the innermost hard fitting. Um, and we're still way, way, way exceeding that. By, we're by 100 pounds, and we've been, uh, I think I've been, I don't know how long my camera allows me to run on video, but I've exceeded the video time on my camera, so um, these valves are quite strong. So here we go, there's, you know, you can see there's the bolt, I just unthreaded it from the hole, and as I was saying, this is the hole from the other day, where I tested the Marillon Seacock. The Marillon Seacock in the same exact situation, uh, the tri-flange, it failed at well below 
ABYC standards. Uh, and, uh, you know, but again, like I said, not a fair comparison because these are designed to have the through hole fitting in them. However, side by side, these valves are almost the same identical height, so leverage wise, we're looking at about the same thing. Uh, this valve, we've seen it today, go over 800 pounds. So, you know, and still holding, and, and the bolts are still holding. We've got two, just two 516 by 18 bolts drilled and tapped into half inch fiberglass.